you have a heart which by its nature is always changing. We have an environment or an era, cultures that are always changing. We are hearing people who are saying things that are always changing. Fitna is presented to the human heart, which is always changing. And salvation is anchored upon presenting Allah with a heart that is free from change. Subhanallah. <laughs> السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters Perhaps it's common knowledge that there isn't anything in life that is more prone to change and alteration from state to state than the human heart One day you are a Muslim and another day you may be something else in the morning you may feel your iman is high and just a few hours later you feel that the world of iman has just flipped upside down. This is the nature of the human heart and perhaps that's why it was given this name, this term qalb. Because it is something that engages in taqallub, meaning changing from side to side. مَا سُمِّيَ الْإِنسَانُ إِلَّا لِنَسِيهِ وَلَا الْقَلْبُ إِلَّا أَنَّهُ يَتَقَلَّبُ The poet, he says, man was given the title insan because he forgets, insan, nisyan, he forgets. And qalb, he said, was given the term qalb because it constantly changes from side to side. And our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has reiterated this meaning, that the hearts, hearts change. He said in the hadith which Ibn Majah narrates on the authority of Abi Musa, he said, مَثَلُ الْقَلْبِ كَمَثَلِ الرِّيشَةِ بِفَلَا تُقَلِّبُهَا الْرِيَاحِ The analogy of the human heart is like the example of a feather that's being blown about on a very windy day. You have no idea on what side it shall land. That is the nature of the heart. Now, this is one level of complexity. The heart constantly changes. There is another element that only compounds the issue, makes it more sophisticated. And that is fitna, trials, tests, tribula tribulations, impermissible desires, they are presented primarily to the heart. Although you may use your eyes to access them, or your hands, or your ears, or any other part of your body, the primary target of this fitna is the human heart. That is the resting place for the fitna. And that is why the Messenger وسلم, said, in the hadith which Muslim narrates on the authority of Hudayfa. He said, تُعْرَضُ الْفِتَنُ عَلَى الْقُلُوبِ كَالْحَصِيرِ عُودًا عُودًا He said, fitna, trials, they are presented to the heart. Fitna by fitna, he said, one after the other, the same way you make your reed mat stick by stick, till it becomes complete. So the heart is changing. Fitna is presented to the heart. Wait, there is another thing that makes the matter even more challenging. Take note of point number three. We are also living in an era of change. Opinions are changing. Isms are evolving. Beliefs are alterating. The Messenger وسلم, said, سَيَكُونُ فِي آخِرِ أُمَّتِي أُنَاسٌ يُحَدِّثُونَكُمْ بِمَا لَمْ تَسْمَعُوا أَنْتُمْ وَلَا آبَاؤُكُمْ فَإِيَّاكُمْ وَإِيَّاهُمْ He said, towards the later generations of Muslims. There will be people who will say things that you and your forefathers have never heard of before. So you and them should take caution. Subhanallah al There is a fourth element now that makes the matter even more challenging, which is what? On the day of judgment, my salvation, your salvation, our success is pending upon a heart that is free from change. And that is why Prophet Ibrahim, he would say in his dua, وَلَا تُخْزِنِي يَوْمَ يُبْعَثُونَ My Lord, don't humiliate me on the day of resurrection. 
On the day when wealth and children do not benefit people. Except a person who comes to Allah with a heart that is sound. So let's put all of the different pieces of the jigsaw puzzle together now. All of the information we just heard, put it in one sentence. You have a heart which by its nature is always changing. We have an environment or an era, cultures that are always changing. We are hearing people who are saying things that are always changing. Fitna is presented to the human heart, which is always changing. And salvation is anchored upon presenting Allah with a heart that is free from change. Subhanallah. So, in conclusion, any time you hear a brother, a sister, speaking about the heart, shubuhat, doubtful matters, illnesses of the heart, give it so much attention because the matter is challenging, dear brother, dear sister. This is what we are looking today in these next few minutes that we have together. The heart, brothers and sisters, as you know, is affected by two broad categories of illnesses. Every spiritual illness falls under one of those two categories. Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim, he said, وَالْقَلْبُ يَعْتَرِضُهُ مَرَضَانِ يَتَوَارَدَانِ عَلَيْهِ إِذَا إِسْتَحْكَمَ فِيهِ كَانَ هَلَاكُهُ وَمَوْتُهُ The heart is afflicted by two illnesses. If they manage to get hold of any person's heart, they will throw him into devastation and destruction. What are they? He said, the illnesses of shahawat, the subtle desires. Number two, the illnesses of shubuhat, the doubtful matters. Think carefully, dear brother, dear sister. Shahawat, desires, the carnal matters. The desire for the opposite gender. The desire to eat and drink. The desire to make money and to get rich quick. All of these are desires and sometimes they can be in the impermissible so they can be harmful. And then you have the second type, and this is the menacing one. This is the really dangerous one. And that is the shubuhat, the doubtful matters. Why is this one more dangerous than that one? Doubtful matters that may affect your iman, change your beliefs, alter the way you see the religion of God Almighty, affect your relationship with Him, cause you to doubt the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, demotivate you from the correct Islamic hijab, change your opinion about the Messenger Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. That's the dangerous one. Why? Because it is a shubha. We translate that into a doubtful matter. But shubha, it's actually in reference to something that resembles something else. That's what makes it so dangerous, because it resembles the truth. It looks like the truth. So the person who's doing it may not feel that he or she is doing anything wrong. In fact, they may argue a case for it. That's why Imam Ibn Qayyim, he says, describing shubuhat, he said, وَإِنَّمَا سُمِّيَتِ الشُّبْهَةُ شُبْهَةً لِشْتِبَاهِ الْحَقِّ بِالْبَاطِلِ فِيهَا فَإِنَّهَا تَلْبِسُ ثَوْبَ الْحَقِّ عَلَى جِسْمٍ مِنَ الْبَاطِلِ he said, shubha, doubtful matters, were given this name because it resembles tushbihu, resembles tushbihu, the truth. So he said, in essence, a doubtful matter is a body of falsehood that is wearing clothes of truth. It's a wolf. It's, it's a predator pretending to be an angel. That is what a shubha is. So you may speak to a brother or a sister, and we are all this person who has fallen prey to a shahwa, a desire. You speak to them, my dear brother, my dear sister, Allah said this, the Messenger of said this, paradise is real, death is real, the hellfire is real. And quickly you see their hearts, subhanallah, shuddering, and you see their ears, their eyes tearing, and they begin to think about change, right? Even if they don't do it now, but there is regret. The guy, however, who is affected with a shubha, a doubtful matter, we cannot say the same. He or she will argue for his case. They don't believe it to be wrong. They say, we've actually got evidence to support this. I heard this presentation on this platform saying it's not how I thought it was. 
So Shubha is far more dangerous. Brothers and sisters, therefore, with this introduction, I would like to offer you and I a few milestones, a few suggested steps to deal with Shubuhat before they arrive and after they arrive. Doubtful matters that may rock the boat of your Iman and cause you to doubt and change your opinion. Four steps. Before the Shubha arrives, if you feel safe, there are still four steps needed so Allah keeps you and I safe. If however you are struggling with something now, there is an element of doubt in your heart. You've read something, you've seen something, you've heard something, and you've never been the same again. I say don't worry, there are also four steps for you to how to help evict it, flush it out of your system. And believe me, before we begin, the only people who will understand the importance of these eight points that we're going to go through are those who are suffering with a shubha at this moment in time. They will say, we need this. Help us with the medicine. Because my salah has not been the same. My fasting has not been the same. My desire to give in charity has not been the same. My desire to attend a halaqa and a lecture has not been the same. I've changed since it has latched onto my heart. I need it out. So take note of these four points and the second set of four points. Either for you today, if you are suffering with it, or either for a family member who you know is suffering with it, or either for your own protection at some point in the future, if Allah decrees that you and I will suffer from it. So let us begin. Before the shubha arrives, so, so now you say, Alhamdulillah, I'm a solid, strong Muslim, I have no doubts, I am certain that Allah is true, and death is true, and paradise and hell are true, there's no problems. I say to you, Akhil Karim, Ukhtil Karima, four steps, nevertheless. The first, Kun ala hadar, be aware, be vigilant, be cautious. Be aware that there is something called shubuhat that require attention. Be alert. Be on the lookout. Don't ever drop your guard. This is the first step. So Allah keeps you and I safe. Be alert of this concept that we are speaking about called shubuhat. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, speaking about some of the children of Israel, وَحَسِبُوا أَلَّا تَكُونَ فِتْنَةٌ فَعَمُوا وَصَمُوا they thought that there will be no test, so they went blind and deaf. Notice, they thought that there will be no test. They were not alert, in other words. So they, were, they went blind and they went deaf. deaf. So one of the key ways of protecting yourself from a shubha that may come your way in the future is to be aware that there is this thing called shubuhat and show Allah that you're scared of it. I.e. you are scared for the well-being of your iman. Don't take it for granted that you are a Muslim today, praying and fasting and dressing nicely as a believer. That could change every one of us. And that is why Ibn Abi Mulaika, who met so many companions, what did he say? He said, أَدْرَكْتُ ثَلَاثِينَ مِنْ صَحَابَةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم كلهم يخاف النفاق على نفسه I met no less than 30 companions of the Prophet and each and every one of them was afraid that he would become a hypocrite one day. Subhanallah. We make dua, right? We make dua. When was the last time you asked Allah to give you protection from hypocrisy or idol worship or any one of the 21st century isms that are sweeping through? This is point number one. To be aware, to be alert and to not allow your God to drop for one moment. That is point number one. Point number two. Don't give any shubha an attentive ear. Don't sit in those gatherings. Don't read the forums. Don't go through the videos. The Netflix series that may be coming out, try to avoid it. If you know the content is going to be one of shubuhat that may shake your iman, stay well away from it. Not because the shubha itself is strong or that the religion can be doubted. No, but because Ali's heart, our hearts are weak. This was the way of the people before us. They didn't risk it. They closed their ears, guarding their iman. And I remember here an incident that happened with a man called Ibn Tawus, one of our predecessors, when a man called Salih came into a room like this and he began to speak about qadr, divine decree, in a doubtful way. He's trying to cast aspersions about Islamic belief. So Ibn Tawus, he put his fingers in his ears. And he said to his son, 
أدخل أصابعك في أذنيك واشدد عليهم ولا تسمع من قوله شيئا فإن القلوب ضعيفة He said quickly put your fingers in your ears and hold them there tightly don't take them out and don't listen to a word he has to say because hearts are weak he said hearts are weak Imam al-Dhahabi he commented on this incident with amazing words he said wa akthar a'immat as-salaf ala dhalik at-tahdhir yarawna anna al-qulub dha'ifa wa anna al-shubah khattafa he said the majority of the imams of islam were upon this advice they would say hearts are weak and shubuhat can snatch those hearts away. Allahu Akbar. So don't, don't put it past yourself. We could change. It could affect you. It may be just one statement that you hear. Because you put yourself in that environment. And it latches onto your heart like a parasite sucking out iman till the day you meet Allah. Who, who can afford that? Who wants that? Keep away dear brother, dear sister. This actually is prophetic advice. Who will come on the day of judgment or before the day of judgment with the biggest chubuhat? What is his nickname? Al-Masih. Al-Dajjal, the Antichrist, right? He will come with major chubuhat, as you know, to make people doubt Allah. What was the advice of our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Man sami'a bid-dajjal falyan'a anhu فَإِنَّ الرَّجُلَ يَأْتِيَهُ يَحْسَبُ أَنَّهُ مُؤْمِنْ فَيَتَّبِعُهُ مِمَّا يَبْعَثْ مِنَ الشُّبُهَاتِ He said, whoever of you hears that the Dajjal, the Antichrist, has appeared, what did he say? Go check him out, take an order, take a selfie with him. Whoever hears that the Dajjal has arrived, he said, go very far away from him. Keep your distance from him, he said. He said, because I swear by Allah, there will be certain Muslims who think that their faith is strong and they will go and speak with him and they will end up believing that he is God Almighty because of the shubuhat that he will show. Step number one, be cautious, be alert. Step number two, don't give it an attentive ear. Step number three, your friends, dear brother, dear sister. Yesterday in London, we were speaking about this. We were discussing with some brothers and sisters that Sometimes all it takes is a good crowd to be around for a few years, subhanAllah, or maybe just a few moments even, and you feel that your certainty becomes so strong. And it could be a gathering of bad people that you spend time with and your iman, your building of iman comes crushing down. People, we are so heavily influenced by people. Common knowledge, right? It's not just human beings that influence us, by the way. We are influenced by the weather. We're grumpy when it's raining, happy when the sun is out. We are influenced by land, whether it is hilly land or flat land. It influences our mood and behavior and temperament, right? We are also influenced, as Ibn Khaldun, he said, the oldest sociologist, he said, we are also influenced by animals. Those who take care of camels are different to those who take care of sheep. Right here in Wales, we will know all about that. They're very different people, subhanAllah al -Azim. What then do you make of the influence of, therefore, of another human being on you and I? The answer to this question is as the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Al Mar'u ala deeni khalilihi. Man will follow the way of his, the religion of his friend. Man will follow the religion of who? Of his friend. And maybe you have heard of a man called Imran ibn Hittan. Imran ibn Hittan used to be a righteous man. That's before he got married, that is. This is a sad story of marriage. He came to marry a cousin of his who was from the deviant sect known as the Kharijites, the Khawarij, who have many erroneous views. They're very lax when it comes to killing and the rest of their innovations. She was from that sect. They said, careful, this woman is from this sect. He said, don't worry, inshallah, I will change her. He married her. What happened? It always happens, right? She changed him. And he became from the sect as well, and he became one of the theorists and the leaders of this sect as well. See, brothers and sisters, the reality of the matter is this, let's be honest. Facts is not all what matters to you and I. Information, truth, accuracy is not what we're just about. There's more we want from life. We want to belong. We want to be part of a community. We want to be part of a tribe, a social circle. 
We want friends, a community to feel loved. And sometimes these two things, they come head to head. The desire for truth and the desire for belonging. Sometimes they are in harmony. Alhamdulillah, you are blessed if you are that person. Sometimes they come head to head. They lock horns with one another. And most people during that time, when there is a conflict between truth and friendship, nine times out of ten, in my observation at least, social belonging will be given preference over the desire for the truth. And that's how the human mind works, as Steven Pinker, he said, psychologist in Harvard University. He said, the brain sometimes pushes a person to accept a belief, even though it may be factually incorrect, but it is socially correct. You know it to be wrong. It may be a shubha. It's an erroneous matter that maybe a few people have said it is part of the religion, but that's your circle of influence, and you and I, we don't want to be outcast. And here is the importance of this point number three, friendship. Who are your friends? Take care of your iman just as you take care of your, of your body, dear brothers and sisters. The last of the four points before we speak about the four points for a person who is actively struggling with shubuhat. The fourth point here is, dear brother, dear sister, make a plan to study the religion of Islam. And don't get caught off guard and say, my God, I have a shubha, what do I do with it? How can I flush it out? No, you and I let us start a plan to, a structured plan of studying the religion from today. See, the human body, and scientists are saying this more and more today, not only has the ability to deal with certain level of cancer cells, the immune system can treat it, and not just that, they are saying every second of the day, most people's bodies are actively destroying cancer cells. The body can do that, bi'idhnillah. However, they say, when we let go of our diet, we eat in an unhealthy way, we don't train, we don't run, we don't ca take care of our sleeping patterns, the immune system is suppressed, it becomes weak, and therefore the cancer cells are able to overcome and multiply. This happens in some cases, and the same can be said about Islam. The shubha, the doubtful matter, is only able to find a place in our hearts and multiply till it eats our iman when we let go of our knowledge. We don't give that the attention it deserves. You don't allow yourself to reach your full potential of information and worship. Therefore, any shubha may rock my boat or rock your boat of iman, whilst the same shubha may be laughed at by another student of knowledge, brother or sister, because they say it is absurd and we see straight through it. What is the difference? Knowledge. So this is point number four. You and I, brothers and sisters, let us make a structured plan for the study of Islam. These four points, put them aside now. Now we want to speak about a brother or sister of ours who is going through the battle at this moment in time. He may see, he may say, I am at this second a victim of shubuhat. I have read something or heard something or seen something. It has never truly left me since that day. Maybe it was an ideology I had in the past, but remnants, I can feel it, they're still in my heart. They are affecting me in Salah and Quran and so on. What do I do? If that person is not you, maybe you know someone who is suffering with this. So take note of these four points. You don't know when you will need them. What will I say? What will you say to this person who is struggling with a doubt? Here are another four, very four, a very quick four points. Number one, stop the thought in its track. Before it develops and becomes a shubha, a, a, a doubtful matter, stop the thought in its tracks. It's still a waswasa, don't worry. It's just a whispering from shaitan, don't worry. And this was the advice of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, يَأْتِ شَيْطَانُ أَحَدَكُمْ فَيَقُولُ اللَّهُ خَلَقَ كَذَا وَكَذَا 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 فَمَنْ خَلَقَ رَبُّكُ فَإِذَا بَلَغَ ذَلِكَ فَلْيَسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ وَلْيَنْتَعْ He said, Shaitan will come to one of us. And he will say to him, You know, God created such and such, and he created such and such. So who created God? Our Prophet ﷺ said, Therefore, if any of you feels this whispering, let him do two things. What are they? Let him seek refuge in Allah from shaitan. Say, A'udhu billahi min shaitan al rajim And number two, let him desist. In other words, stop the thought in his track. 
Don't think, don't dwell on it anymore. Leave it. Cut the chain of thoughts before it begins to develop into a shubha, which then requires a different medicine altogether. At that moment in time, don't convince yourself that you are a bad Muslim and you're about to leave the religion of Islam. As I remember, subhanAllah, one couple who came into the Sharia council, the brother, he says, I need to renew my marriage with my wife. We, we said, what happened, bro? He said, I left the religion of Islam. SubhanAllah, how did you leave the religion of Islam? He said, I was just at home and then I just thought of something that pertains to disbelief. So it seems that I have left the religion and I would like to re-enter the religion and marry my wife again. It's not that simple. It's not that easy. No, it's just a whispering of shaitan. And the fact that you are afraid of it indicates that your iman is strong. As the Messenger وسلم, said to the companions who were scared of these whisperings, he said, iman. That is the manifest reality of faith. That is the truest part of faith. Because you're scared of it. It's not a shubha yet, don't worry. This is step number one. Stop the thought in its track. Step number two, brothers and sisters, this point here is so important. Develop a critical way of thinking. Here in the West, particularly, we are taught to think analytically, critically. Don't take things for granted, for givens. Why don't we apply this now? And I'm amazed. Sometimes I see a brother or sister who come to us and they've just crumbled to pieces. How come I read something, I've saw something, I've heard something, my iman is devastated, I'm ruined, I, I'm so scared. Why are you crumbling to pieces? Why do you take these matters, dear brother, dear sister, to these extremes? Allah does not want this from you and I. Wait, wait, be composed. Relax, breathe for a moment. Think critically about what has just come your way. Does it even make sense or is the absurdity clear from its outset? Think about it. Don't make my brother, my sister, advice for us. Don't make your heart like a sponge that just absorbs all of the information that comes to it. Critique it. Break it apart. Break it down. Think analytically. And this was the advice which Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah gave to his student Imam ibn al-Qayyim. Ibn al-Qayyim, he said, وَقَدْ جَعَلْتُ أُورِدُ الْإِرَادَاتَ عَلَيْهِ I was asking my teacher so many questions about these doubtful matters, one after the other. So my teacher, Ibn, Ibn Taymiyyah, he said to me, listen, Ibn Al-Qayyim, don't make your heart like a sponge that just absorbs all of the downfall arguments that come its way. Rather, make your heart like crystal clear glass, which is solid enough to repel the shubha when it passes over it, but it is transparent enough to see straight through the shubha. Allahu Akbar. Imam ibn Qayyim, he said, I don't know in my life of any advice that has benefited me in resisting these doubtful thoughts than the words of my teacher Ibn Taymiyyah. Subhanallah and So think critically about everything that comes your way and don't take it for granted. This is step number what? This is step number two. Here is step number three, no less important than the ones before it. Find a specialist and consult him, consult her. And what I mean by a specialist is not necessarily your local imam. With all due respect to our imams and our mashayikh, sometimes, not always, sometimes his only qualification is a beautiful, melodious voice. But then you go to him and you think that he has the answer to all of the problems of life. And you're let down once and twice and thrice. And because he doesn't give you an answer, you think there must be no answer. But the principle is clear. The principle is... عدم العلم ليس دليلا على العدم إن عدم العلم ليس دليلا على العلم بالعدم meaning the absence of knowledge does not mean that knowledge is absent the absence of knowledge does not equate to the absence of knowledge meaning that, that knowledge is absent meaning just because Ali doesn't have an answer it doesn't mean that an answer does not exist find a specialist for your problem Go and ask him, go and ask her and say, this is my issue. And this is what the Qur'an recommends. Find a specialist. And that is why Allah, he said, وَلَوْ رَدُّوهُ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ وَإِلَىٰ أُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْهُمْ لَعَلِمَهُ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَنْبِطُونَهُ مِنْهُمْ Had they referred their matter to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and those people in authority over them then those people of correct investigation would have understood its deduction, Allah said. 
find a specialist and consult him, consult her, and then they will show us and unpack the shubha in front of us and dismember it and dismantle it and it will become apparent that it was absurd all along, but I just didn't have the tools to unpack it myself. Find a specialist. This is number what? Number three, the last point I wanted to share with you, my dear brother, my dear sister, and perhaps this is the most important of all. Make dua that Allah safeguards your iman. A quick survey of how many people has made dua for a righteous spouse, I think all of the hands will come firing up, including myself, alhamdulillah. Who has made dua for a, a house which does not involve an interest-based mortgage? I think maybe some of us have made it or will make it sooner or later. Or have made dua for a car that doesn't need MOTs all of the time and tires that keep bursting. And, uh, children who don't need too much tuition and subhanallah al -Azim. We've all made dua for these types of things. Health, recovery, somebody who is suffering in the family. Yes, make dua because the door is open for all of these things. But don't forget the most important of all, and that is the safeguarding of your iman. When was the last time you raised your hands and you said the words of Prophet Ibrahim? Protect me and my children, O oh Allah, from prostrating to idols. Wow, would you have thought that an imam like Prophet Abraham would make a dua like this? He fears it for himself. Yes, he does. Allah, ihdina sirat al mustaqim guide us to the straight path. Say it with the fullness of your heart and see how your salah will become a new experience. Dua, dua. And our mother Aisha, she once heard her husband, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, introducing his night prayer when everyone is asleep. What was he saying in his dua? He said, Allahu Akbar. And then she heard him say these following words. Memorize them. Allahumma Rabba Jibra'il wa Mika'il wa Israfil. Oh Allah, you are the Lord of angels, Jibra'il and Mika'il and Israfil. Fatir al Samawati wal Ard, you are the creator of the heavens and the earth. Alim al Ghaybi wa Shahada, you are the knower of the seen and the unseen. Anta tahkumu bayna ibadika fi ma kanu fihi yakhtalifun. You are the one who will judge between people. Regarding those matters that they differ in. And then he said, Guide me, O Allah, to the correct opinion in those matters that people are quarreling over. After all, it is only you who guides people to the straight path. Subhanallah. The man who was connected to the heavens via angel Jibreel through revelation is saying, My Lord, guide me to the correct opinion when people are deferring. Have you made this dua, dear brother, dear sister? And watch how Allah will fortify your iman. These are four steps before the shubha arrives and four steps to deal with it if it has already arrived. Finally, as a farewell message, brothers and sisters, create a vision for your life. Identify your skills and work for a project that will bring about the maximum return in terms of reward on the day of judgment. A project that will continue to feed good deeds into your grave when you are six feet under and you have died. A project that will help extend your short life, that will outlive your short life. Create a vision, dear brothers and sisters. You may say, wow, that's random. How does this Feed into what you are speaking about, steps to dealing with shubuhat, doubtful matters. What is the relationship between this and that type of conclusion? The relationship, perhaps you have discovered it, is clear. Many times the reason why we doubt part of the religion is because of excessive free time. Nothing else. Not because we are bad people. And it may not be because we are ignorant or because iman is weak. It simply could be because we just have too much free time. So shaitan, he finds an open ground to throw his seeds and to give you all sorts of wacko ideas. And there was one of our contemporaries, a specialist in this field, Sheikh Ahmed al Sayyid. I heard him recently say, there was a sister who used to come to me with questions, with these shubuhat, these doubtful matters. And I would answer her questions time and time again. But there was just no stop to them. No sooner would I have answered the first question, she has another question. It was just a torrent of doubts. I didn't know how to deal with it. 
And then I discovered the problem. I said to her sister, by the way, uh, I've uh, got some lectures that I really need you to help transcribe for me. Do you have some free time to help me out with this project? She said, yeah, I, I can do it, inshallah. So he gave her the MP3s or the recordings and she began to transcribe them. He said, subhanallah, the moment she began doing this, her, her questions came to a stop. She never asked me a doubtful matter ever again. Which shows you that the key issue in many of our lives is simply excessive time. Therefore, find a project for your hereafter. Dedicate the best portion of your life for it today. And watch how not only will it fortify you from doubtful matters today, it will also guide you and I to the highest grades of paradise in the hereafter. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us all to enjoy the sweetness of Iman and to clothe us with the clothing of yaqeen, certainty in the religion, and to forgive us and our mothers and our fathers and our children. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad, alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.